Most Saturdays at this time, we spend an exciting half hour of adventure and action with America's public hero number one, Hopalong Cassidy. Well, even two-fisted cowboys take summer vacations when they can, and Hoppy is no exception. But Hopalong and Topper will be back with us riding the CBS air trails again two weeks from tonight, September 22nd. Get this and get it straight. Crime is a sucker's road, and those who travel it wind up in the gut of the prison of the grave. There's no other end, but they never learn. From the pen of Raymond Chandler, outstanding author of crime fiction, comes his most famous character in The Adventures of Philip Marlowe. Now, with Gerald Moore, starred as Philip Marlowe, we bring you tonight's transcribed story, The Medium Was Rare. Let me out of here. I've got to get away. This is the time. The time when all I can think of is trout streams, trails through tall mountains, where every man is Hopalong Cassidy. I was sitting in my favorite restaurant telling Mary my favorite hash slinger all about it. Oh, it all sounds so wonderful, Phil. Yeah, but that's not the half of it. There are waterfalls so high, it seems the cascade comes from heaven itself. Going alone, Phil? You bet your sweet life I'm going alone. In the words of the poet, I'm going to commune with nature. I'm the most natural thing you ever saw. Darling, you're beautiful. Your charms are many, but you want me to be honest? Yeah. You don't compare to a trout. Why, you worm. <laughs> don't get mad, baby. It's the season. Mm, season her out. I don't like being compared to a fish. Not a fish, baby. The queen of them all. A mountain trout. Did you ever hear of the Feather River country, Mary? If it's out of Los Angeles County, I've never been there. It's in northern California. Northern fringe of the mother load. Here's your coffee. Mother who? Hey, hey, you know something? If I started right now, I could make it before morning. A quick cup of coffee, huh, doll? I'll drop everything. Well, if it ain't the clean living type. Hi, Molo. Hiya, Cookie. I thought they had you stashed away. Not no more. I got parole last week. No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. It was your bum rap. It sure was, if you're out this soon. Anything else? Yeah. When do you get off? A lot later than you do, because you're getting off now. Touche, girl. Yeah? What kind of a crack is that? That's French for I'm on your team. Ah. <laughs> ah, dames. You try to say something nice to him, and uh, where does it get you? Yeah, well, I got to go, Cookie. I'm sorry to yeah, see wait, you. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I'll go with you. Thanks, uh, Mary. Yeah, you bet, Phil. Give my regards to the fish. <laughs> I leave you a nickel, doll. Better keep it. The other buffalo will miss you. Oh, well, yeah, we should. You gotta face it, Cookie. She's crazy about you. You think so? No. Well, my car's in the lot here. I'm in a hurry, yeah, so. Yeah, well, if... mine's in the lot too. Uh, uh, listen, Marlo. I was just wondering. You get around. Uh, you got any idea where Chisano is? Chisano? Yeah. Don't you know any decent people? Well, hey, Chisano's my pal. He's as decent as I am. You made the point, Cookie. Well, Seems to me there was talk he had something to do with you taking that rap in the first place, huh? Listen, you don't think I'm trying to find him to knock him off or anything like that. Could be, or about that bright. But it doesn't really matter. I don't know where he is. I don't care. I don't want to know where you are, either. Well, that suits me good. Only good. I don't know what you're so kissed off about. I, I done nothing to you. Neither is Chisano. You make my taxes higher. Yeah, how? Never mind. Oh, you kill me, Marlo. Mm. You talk about taxes. <laughs> How'd you like to pay taxes on this job? This your heap? Yeah. One of them foreign things. <laughs> right hand drive. Baby blue yet. <laughs> it matches my eyes. What'd you do at San Quentin? Learn a trade? Sure. And a good one. Sure. You decent people go right on paying taxes, Marlo. Us third rate punks will get along. <laughs> I watched Cookie's baby blue convertible cut out into the traffic. Got in my own car and drove away in the opposite direction. Yeah, Cookie cinched it. I was going to knock off for a while, head for the Feather River country. Well, by the time I reached my apartment, I could almost smell the pine trees. And while I tossed a few things into a bag, I saw myself every inch a modern Isaac Walton. Oh. oh you're Philip Marlowe. That's right. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I've been calling you... 
Oh, I- I'm Lillian Collins. How are you? Well, uh... I told Pat not to wait. Who's Pat? The taxi driver. Oh, him. Uh, may I come in? Well, yeah, I guess so. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're, you're packing. Or are you unpacking? No, I'm packing. I'm going to the Feather oh, River Country. Oh, but you country. can't. I... What? You can't be going anywhere. I... Well, I need your help, Mr. Marlowe. I really do desperately. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd take a few days of off. Can't I'll, it work? I'll pay you whatever's customary. I just don't know where to turn. And somehow we've got to locate them quickly. Leonard should be home within a oh, week. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sit down. Mrs. Uh, uh, Collins, is it? Uh, yes, Lillian. Oh. Uh, Leonard's my husband. He's back east on business. Well, just what do we have to locate quickly? My jewelry. It was stolen last night. Oh, well, stolen jewelry's out of my line, Mrs. Collins. That's a police job. Oh, no. Oh, that is it. It, it can't be. Why? I, I thought about the police right away, of course, but I, I can't call them in. Leonard would hear about it, I know. It, it would be in the papers, and... You understand, don't you? No, I don't understand. Well, I, I just couldn't, that's all. Mrs. Collins, right now I like fishing poles better than I do oh, people. Oh, but you can't go. I... I mean, you can, of course, but... I do need your help so much. <laughs> Why can't I resist names? All right, but you have to level with me. What jewelry? When did it happen? Who knew you had it? Everything. Well, it was a necklace, diamonds, yeah. and a diamond bracelet. I had them in my jewel box last night. I'd only just taken them from our safe deposit box in the afternoon. Who knew you took them out? Well, no one. No one knew. Mm-hmm. Well, how did it happen, the robbery, I mean? Well, I, I was in my bedroom... That's where the jewel box was. Yeah. I was dressing for dinner. The doorbell rang. I had to answer it. Letty's on vacation now that Mr. Collins is in the East. It was Sylvia, a friend of mine. We were to have dinner together. I fixed a drink for us, then went back to my bedroom for my wrap. That's when I noticed the jewelry was missing. You hadn't heard anything, anyone in the house? No. Mm. Of course, the radio was on. Music, you know. Mm -hmm. How would anyone get into the bedroom? Well... The French doors open onto a little terrace right by the bedroom. I rather presumed whoever it was came in that way. Well, how much would you say this jewelry is worth? Ten thousand dollars. Mm. Oh, that's what it's insured for. Anything else taken? No, not a thing. Do you wear this necklace and bracelet often? Oh, no, not really. When Leonard gave them to me, he said they were for state occasions. Last night was a state occasion. Oh, right? my goodness, no. Oh, that is, I... If you didn't intend to wear them last night, why did you take them out of the safe deposit box? I, I suppose you'll have to know. I needed the money, Mr. Marlowe. I have a debt Leonard knows nothing about. If I wrote a check for ten thousand dollars, he'd ask questions. I don't blame him. Well, there's just no need worrying him with it. That's all. He doesn't know you gamble, huh? I didn't say. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't have to. Have you ever pawned anything before, Mrs. Cullen? No. No, I haven't. Well, I got news for you. You probably couldn't get ten grand for them. Oh, but if they're insured... Doesn't matter. Unless you made a deal to have them stolen so you could get the insurance money. Oh, really, Mr. Marlowe? Really, Mrs. Collins? (laughs) Okay. Let's drive to your place and look around. doors have been jimmied, all right. Didn't it bother you to stay here last night after it happened? Oh, I didn't. I stayed with Sylvia in Westwood. Told her about the robbery, huh? No, no, I didn't. I started to, but then I... I was afraid I'd have to tell her too much. Mm. Did you stay there last night and then come over to my apartment by cab this morning? Well, I came here first, then to your apartment. I wanted to be sure nothing else was missing. And then I decided to get in touch with you and had Pat drive me over. That's the taxi driver. (laughs) He's practically my chauffeur. His stand is right out in front of our building here. I'm one of those native-born New Yorkers who never learned to drive. Mrs. Collins, Hmm? are you sure that you're telling me everything you know about this? Oh, believe me, I am, Mr. Marlowe. Why, it would be so stupid of me not to. Yes, it would. I've got to have that jewelry back before Leonard comes. He'll just never understand the gambling and all I... Well, he's gone so much, and we have no children. There there just wasn't anything else to do. Can you understand that, Mr. Marlowe? No. 
But I'll try, Mrs. Collins. There was something tragic about her. A woman of means and advantage who was husbandless part of the time and childless all of the time. I suppose that isn't an easy life, but surely there must be other ways to fill the emptiness, huh? Well, Lillian packed a small bag and asked me to drive her to Sylvia's. As we walked toward my car, a grinning taxi driver leaned out of his cab. Take you somewhere, Mrs. Collins? Oh, not this time. Thanks, Pat. I'm freeloading. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but don't make it a habit. I gotta make a living, you know. I know. See you later, Pat. He's awfully nice, Mr. Mark. Yeah, he seems to be. Tell me about your friend, Sylvia. Oh, well, there isn't much to tell. She's a nice person, a widow. Oh, she just lives a block or so from here. Turn on Wilshire to your left. Okay. Tell me, does Sylvia have money? Well, I guess so. She seems to, anyway. Has a lovely apartment, a nice car, all the symbols, anyway. Why? I just wonder. Oh, uh, by the way, if you don't want her to know you've hired me, maybe you better tell her I'm a business friend of your husband, huh? Just drop by as you were leaving the house, something like that. Oh, oh, yes, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, it's in this block, the big green apartment building on the right. Okay. Hmm. That's funny. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, here's a parking place. Wonder what Cookie's doing around here. <clears throat> a friend of yours? No, no, not possibly. That car parked there, foreign job, baby blue. It's cookies, all right. Oh. Sylvia's apartment is the first one on this side. You, you really don't have to come in, Mr. Mark. Name's Murphy, remember? Oh. Old friend of your husband's. Yes, yes, that's right. I'll come in to carry your bag and to meet Sylvia. <laughs> I'm very partial to wealthy widows. Really, Mr. Marlowe, do you think you will find my jewelry? Well, I've got one idea so far, Mrs. Collins. If that doesn't work... Now, you leave it up to me, huh? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, oh, here we are. Oh, Lil, darling, I'm so glad you're back. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, Sylvia, this is Mr... Murphy. Uh, oh, yes, of course, Mr. Murphy. Sylvia Jennings. How do you do, Mr. How are you? Murphy? Well, come in, come in, both of you. I was just getting ready for a swim. Oh. Sounds wonderful. Maybe I could scare up a pair of trunks for you, Mr. Murphy. Oh, thanks. No, I, I've got to run along. I just stopped by Mrs. Collins looking for her husband. Uh, Mr. Murphy's from out of town, known Leonard for years. I was all packed, ready to come over here. So I brought her. Well, all right. You know, you two don't have to explain anything to me. As a matter of fact, I can go down to the pool alone, and you two can stay here and uh, talk about old times. Why, Sylvia. Oh, relax, Bill. And forgive me, Mr. Murphy. I've told stories like that myself so many times, I know them by heart. I'll bet you do it that. You know I do. <laughs> what? Now, I just won't have you thinking that, Sylvia. <laughs> oh, now, don't be silly, darling. It's not important. Oh, but it is. Hey, wait a minute. Just... Hold it, hold it. Let you both go down to the pool and talk it all over. I really have business to tend to. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Yeah, we'll just keep it that way. Huh? Uh, but we'll... Will we be hearing from you about anything or anything uh, you know? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, sure you will. About anything. About that Sylvia. Well, the case was beginning to have its compensations. But I didn't figure Lillian Collins at all. Sometimes I thought she lied in her teeth, and sometimes I knew that she was just a bewildered dame who'd had her jewels lifted. I passed Cookie's car again as I left and still no sign of him. I had told Lily and I had one idea. He was still at the taxi stand in front of her apartment. You really Philip Marlowe? Yeah, I really am. Need proof? No, no, that's okay. Mrs. Collins wouldn't have been with you if you weren't a right guy. You say I can help? Yeah, huh? maybe so. Now look, you drive her almost everywhere she goes. Now how about telling me just where she goes, huh? Regulation places, saxes, magnons, Places for lunch, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This morning I took her over to a Hollywood address. Oh, that was me. Oh, <laughs> well, oh, hey, there is one place she goes oh. a couple of times a week for the last three or four weeks. A place on top of one of the hills up off of Coldwater Canyon. Friend of her? Well, maybe. She usually asks me to wait, though, between 15 minutes and a half hour. That's all the longer she stays. When was the last time you took her there? Let me see. Uh, day before yesterday, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was the day before yesterday. I followed Pat's instructions through every devious curve to the top of Coldwater Canyon. The thing that interested me most was not what was ahead, but what or who was behind me in the big expensive car. The sun was hitting the windshield just right to obscure the driver. I slowed at the isolated address, noticed another big car parked in front. When I stopped, the car behind me stopped. A well-dressed woman got out and went into the house. As she did, she passed another well-dressed woman coming out. It looked like a change of shifts. As she drove away, I got out of the car and went up to the door. Someone somewhere was watching me. I could feel it. Yes? Oh, hello. I, uh... I, uh, do not believe you have an appointment, sir. Oh, well, no, I, I didn't think to make one. Excuse me, please, sir. One moment. What a creep. And what a joint. You, uh, will come in, please. Yeah, thanks. May I inquire, sir, who referred you here? I have to have a reference? Madame must insist on references, sir. Oh, she insists, yeah, yeah. well... I'm a friend of Mrs. Collins, Lillian Collins. Oh, yes, yes, uh, Mrs. Collins, yeah. yes. Uh, you will follow me, then. Madame will see you now. More to the point, I will see Madame. I followed the Peter Lorry character down a darkened hallway... As far as I could tell, there was no door ahead. It looked like a blind alley. Even in the darkness, I sensed that someone could see me. I didn't have long to think about it. Just when we reached what looked like an impasse, the little man ahead of me pulled some heavy drapes aside and nodded for me to enter. I walked into a room that was heavily draped on all sides, pungent with the smell of incense. And studying me from across the room, a Grecian-robed woman seated beside, so help me, a crystal ball. You will come in, please. And be seated. Yeah, I will. <coughs> you see, I... Hush! Uh, hmm? You will remain silent. It is so necessary, your silence. Bruno, you will go. Yes, madam. Hey, they're very clever, those drapes. <laughs> when they're closed, you can't tell where the door is. I must insist. Your silence is very important. Ah. Oh. You are in need of help. Much help. Or you would not be here. Yeah, well, you could say that. Yeah. You make it very difficult for me to see what is in store for you. The crystal is cloudy, very cloudy. I'll quit breathing on it. Please. Oh, excuse me. Now, you are seeking something, probing, searching out. And this is not a good thing. Some things one must not pursue. I regret to say, for you I see much trouble. Great trouble and danger. <coughs> you are in need of rest, my friend. Rest and sleep. A long sleep. Bruno will help you. Bruno will help you to sleep. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of Philip Marlowe. But first, through the years, Red Cross has helped the victims of disaster, brought comfort to servicemen in camps and hospitals and to their families. Today, with the country rising to meet the challenge of aggression, the Red Cross has been asked by the government to undertake tremendous tasks. By giving generously to the Red Cross, you will help mobilize for the defense of your families, your community, and the nation. Give as much as you can. And now with our star, Gerald Moore, the second act of Philip Marlowe, and tonight's story, The Medium Was Rare. The madam's prediction was suffocatingly accurate. Bruno helped me sleep all right with a strong assist from a sponge full of ether. My watch said it was two hours later when I came out of the anesthetic a long way from the house on the top of Coldwater Canyon. I was in my own car, parked on a strand of beach north of Santa Monica. It's 
Ten minutes and a blast of bourbon later, I entered Sylvia Jennings' apartment again. This time there was no sign of Cookie's baby blue car. I don't think Lillian will be long. She remembered some shopping she had to do. Did she? You don't look as if you felt very well, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, I feel just fine. I just woke up from a long sleep. <laughs> and by the way, Mrs. Jennings, you really shouldn't call me Mr. Marlowe. Oh. Oh, yes. Now, where on earth do you suppose I got the name Marlowe? I really wouldn't know. Okay, where's Lillian, huh? I told you she went shopping. Without a purse? Well, what do you That blue about? bag there. She was carrying it when I brought her here. Now, isn't that odd? Yes, isn't it? Uh. Oh, uh, the door. Do you excuse sure. me? Sure. Yes? Uh, uh, I want to see Chisano. Ch well, you must be mistaken. There's no one here by that name. He was here, doll. I've seen him. What? Oh, well, just wait for him. No, you can't come in here. Well, Cookie, hello. Here. What is this, Marlowe? Well, it's one of those happy coincidences, Cookie. For the first time in my life, I'm glad to see you. Oh, close the door, Mrs. Jennings. <laughs> Make yourself at home. I'm afraid I don't understand this, Mr. Marlowe. Yeah, well, I was afraid I wouldn't for a while, but stick around. I think things are going to clear up in a hurry. Listen, Marlowe, what's the pitch here? You know this thing? Not as well as I'm going to. You sure you saw Chisano here, Cookie? Yeah, I'm sure. He leave here about an hour ago with another dame. Listen, you Brunette, keep quiet. Brunette, Cookie, blue and white dress? Yeah. And she didn't seem too happy about going with Chisano. Did you tell him? Sure. To a house up at the top of Coldwater Canyon. That's fine, Cookie. Then what happened? <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I'm all set to move in, talk to Chisano, when some jerk jumps me and stuffs my face full of a sponge thing. It was loaded. You passed out? Yeah, for a while. When I wake up, I'm sitting in my car, big as you please, down at the bottom of the canyon. I figured Chazano started from here. He'd be coming back, so I come back. <laughs> and here you are. Interesting story, isn't it, Mrs. Jennings? None of it's true. Of course not. How'd you get a line on Chazano, Cookie? Well, it's talking town. He's got a new racket. Got something to do with a rich doll. You know who this thing is? Tell me. She's right out of the blue book, that's who. I don't figure her with Chazano. Except I, I gotta believe what I see. Yeah, Cookie, me too. Then maybe you two will believe this gun if you see it. What? Stay oh, where you are and keep the hands up. I know I'd get to know you better, Mrs. Jennings. Stop me if I'm wrong. You set up suckers, wealthy females, con a visiting madame who tells fortunes based on what you've told you're her. You're crazy and you're in no position to talk. Maybe then the madame predicts some trouble for him. How huh? warns him of dangers ahead. Shut up. Like maybe your jewelry isn't safe where it is. Take it out of the bank. Keep it at home where you can watch it, Lillian. And when the poor stoop does that, you come in the front door and Chisana comes in the back to cop the jewels. I said shut up. Hey, Marlo, you think that's the deal? I think that's the deal, Cookie. Oh, no, no, uh, please, are you uh, breaking my arm? Only oh, if I have to, baby. Uh, get the gun, Cookie. Uh, sure. <laughs> and bring Mrs. Jennings along, Cookie. The three of us are going to have our fortunes told. <laughs> How about that Chesano? What a sweet deal he's got. I didn't figure him for so smart. He's a big brain, all right. And wait till he hears we're cutting in on him, sharing the take. Huh? This way, everybody makes dough. Me, you, Chesano, even the little doll here, huh? Oh, leave but... me alone. Easy does it, Cookie. <laughs> You're pretty smart yourself. How'd you figure I was going to make a business deal with Chesano? Oh, yeah, no, Chump Marlo. I got every Seamus figured. You're all looking for that one big sweet deal like Chazano's got to move in on. It's a natural. Yeah, you're right. Chazano will never go for it. He's got no choice, doll. Oh, hey, watch it, Marlowe. There's a geek in a prowl car ahead of you. Yeah, I've been watching him. Where's Mrs. Jennings' gun, Cookie? We're right here. Why? Give it to me a minute, huh? Hey, you ain't gonna plug it. Come on, come on, give it to me. <laughs> okay, but I, I don't get you. Thanks. <laughs> Wait, you hit him. Yeah, and that's not all. What are you doing? You ran right into that police car. That's the way I played it, honey. Hey, that wasn't very bright. Oh, oh Mr. Marlowe. Got a couple of customers for you, officer. I had to move quick. Why, sure, sure, oh, but... You oh, yes, we do. The lively one's got a great racket. I'll tell you about it later. You... Cookie over there wants to see his parole officer. You, uh, you want me to take them in? I sure do. And tell your brethren to come to 6956 Canyon Rim, top of Coldwater Canyon, right away. With their muskets loaded. The house at the top of the canyon had the empty look that only occupied houses can have. 
Cookie had tipped his hand just in time. I was better off traveling light. I knew I'd have no trouble getting in. Shizana was probably expecting me. I was so right. You're late, Marlowe. Well, some days it takes me longer to come out of ether than others. <laughs> you must have done a good job, Bruno. I always try, Mr. Chisano. Oh, believe me, Chisano, he's earned a promotion. Get the business over with. Well, madame, I didn't recognize you without your crystal ball. Never mind that, Marlo. Okay, I won't. Where's Lillian? Uh, she's, uh, she's arresting. Oh. Look, uh, Chisano, your nasty little racket here is one thing, but kidnapping is another, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And murder is something else again. You forced us, Mr. Marlowe. I warned you not to probe. Cesano, listen. I'm not kidding. If you've done anything to Lillian, I'll take you... She's perfectly safe. She's not been harmed yet. That's right. Not yet. She better not be. She... Oh, oh, there you are, Lillian. She can't be. There's no one there. It's an old gag, Cesano. Gives me a chance at my gun. Now the three of you stand over there by the windows. Now, look, Marlowe. Now, you look. You and Bruno and Madame take a good look out the window and let me know when the law arrives. <laughs> you know, Madame, even without your crystal ball, I can see trouble for you. Much trouble. <laughs> Lillian had been given the ether treatment, too. We found her when the police arrived. She was okay, just thoroughly frightened. She wasn't all we found when we searched the place. Chisano hadn't fenced the jewelry as fast as he stole it. And the parade of women who came to claim it all later read like the social register. Eh, social register. The elite. The 400. Yeah, well, I know a place where the 400 give way to 4,000 luscious, lovely mountain trout. Oh, the forest primeval, the murmuring pines and the... Yeah... You know what? I don't think I'm going to make it. The Adventures of Philip Marlowe, bringing you Raymond Chandler's most famous character, star Gerald Moore was produced and transcribed tonight by Cliff Howell and written for radio by Kathleen Height. The cast included Gloria Blondell, Ed Max, Jean Bates, Harry Bartell, Betty Lou Gerson, Lou Krugman, Ida Reese Marin, and Jay Novello. Gerald Moore may currently be seen in the Santana production, Sirocco. The special music for Philip Marlowe is composed by Pierre Garagank and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. <laughs> Be sure to listen again next week at the same time when Philip Marlowe says... This time, strange sounds came from a bungalow court. Or did they? An old woman thought so, but she had quite an imagination. A crack in the wall held the secret. A couple of guys held guns. And a nice guy held on. For dear life. <laughs> Just as systematic exercise builds a strong body, so does systematic saving build a strong future. Save systematically for your future and for your country's future with the United States defense bonds. Defense bonds are Series E bonds, safe, sure, profitable. The systematic, easy way to buy defense bonds is through the payroll savings plan where you work. So for the defense of your future, for the defense of your country's future, buy your full share regularly, systematically, of United States defense bonds. Roy Rowan speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>